Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we have a story from Australia. The Australian government in Victoria have launched an ad campaign urging women to be kind. To be kind to transgender individuals who want to identify as women. The trans men, funny enough, they don't seem to get a look in. It's all about the male individuals who want to identify as women. But anyway, so we don't need an ad campaign telling us to be kind, obviously. However, when you watch this commercial, it is as clear as day that they're telling you that your instincts are unkind, your desire to feel safe is unkind, and wanting to participate in sports fairly and safely is also unkind. Essentially, that's the message they're putting out there. And this is the issue when it comes to identity. Identity seems to come before biology, number one. So we're forced to accept certain people as being women when they are male. And that has consequences as we are seeing every day. And it's not just about losing a competition, which they like to downplay, or you just don't like losing. <laughs> it's not just about that. It's also about safety. But of course, to say that is bigotry, apparently. To state the obvious and to point out the flaws of choosing identity over biology is somehow discriminating against trans people. So the Victoria government wants women to understand that they're supposed to put males before themselves. They're supposed to put males who want to identify as women before their safety. Now the ad starts, uh, Gemma, with examples of people being mean and ignoring uh, trans people, not letting them sit next to them. And then that shows, oh, actually, you're supposed to be nice to them. I mean, how insulting is this and how necessary is this? Well, I mean, Victoria's a failed state, so let's start with that. But the second thing, there's another ad that's doing the rounds in this suite of ads, which shows a woman in a lift with a, a trans person and um, and she feels uncomfortable and the woman leaves the lift and, and the inference of that ad is, oh, you're being really mean. You're being really mean. You need to stay in the lift with that person. And, look, I, I can tell you it doesn't matter. As, as a woman, it doesn't matter who I'm in a lift with or who I'm in a car with or who I'm in a position with, walking down the street with. I don't care if it's a man or woman, a person who's trans, gay, straight, brindle, black, whatever. If I feel unsafe, for whatever reason, that is my prerogative and my responsibility yep. to act on that. And I, the Victorian government should be ashamed of itself because you are gaslighting women to say that your feelings are not valid because you need to make you need to make a cohort of people, you know, feel okay. If a woman is in any situation with any other person of any other iteration and she feels unsafe, that is her prerogative. Where does the Victorian government get off telling women that they need to ignore when they feel unsafe and put themselves in jeopardy? Because we know that sometimes things happen and we think if we had just followed our instincts, they would never have happened. So many people say that, male or female. And now the Victorian government is telling women that you feeling unsafe, number one, makes the trans person feel unsafe. What is unsafe about somebody getting out of a lift and making a decision for themselves? At no point was that person unsafe because she got out of the lift. Why would a six foot whatever male <laughs> feel unsafe? Because a woman decides to get out of the lift. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that that person's feelings were not hurt. In that situation, a person's feelings may be hurt, yes. But that's not the same as being in a position where you feel unsafe. There are two different things. So if a woman gets out of the lift and makes a decision for herself and for her own peace of mind and does something about it, if you feel unsafe, usually you should do something about it to get yourself out of a situation that is making you feel uncomfortable. So if she decides to do that, it's not up to the Australian government to tell her that she is wrong for doing that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so the Australian government is telling women that if they feel unsafe about competing against the male athlete, who is huge, by the way, they're bigots. Welcoming somebody doesn't mean that you have to put yourself in an unsafe situation. Welcoming somebody doesn't mean that we have to do away with categories in sports. You can be kind and still maintain fairness. You can be kind and still uphold safety. This commercial 
is literally telling women that it's their job to appease transgender individuals who want to identify as women, even to their own detriment, even if it means putting your safety on the line, even if it means you can break your neck, even if it means you could get concussed, even if it means you're excluded for good. It's one thing telling women they have to be willing to lose. I mean, that's bad enough that it's their competition and they should be able to compete fairly. But it's another thing telling women that they need to put their life on the line to appease somebody's identity. I'm not exaggerating. There are women who have been injured as a result of having to compete against a transgender athlete. It's a fact that when women compete against males, they're more likely to get injured. Yes, you can get injured competing against other women, but you're more likely to get injured when you compete against a male athlete and the severity of your injury is more likely to be greater. We've had women with broken knees. We've had women who have dealt with concussions. We've had women who are dealing with long-term consequences of competing against a male athlete, still trying to recover years after. And we have women who can't compete anymore. Peyton McNabb, for example, her career in volleyball, the goals that she had were ruined. But the Victorian government in Australia wants you to forget all of that and ignore all of that and risk everything to appease somebody's gender identity. Now, I'm not saying the Victorian Labor government hates your wife and daughters, but well, you've got to wonder, Jacinta Allen's government has just launched a new campaign tackling discrimination against transgendered women. The issue here is not whether you're trans, people can live their lives as they please. But the problem is this advertising campaign is basically 60 seconds of emotional blackmail designed to shame women into prioritising the feelings of men above their own personal safety. What could possibly go wrong? So a woman decides she'd rather not be alone in an elevator with the biological man who scowls at her from a great height, so she leaves. And this, plus presumably the fact there were no pride flags in the elevator, makes the trans woman very, very sad. You know, we teach our daughters that they should trust their instincts and they should remove themselves from a situation where they feel unsafe. But the Victorian government is using your taxes to give your daughters the very opposite message. A million years of evolution imbues you with a sense of danger that has helped our species survive. Now our girls are being told to ignore all that because otherwise a man wearing a dress might have his feelings hurt. They're literally suggesting it's the job of women to make men feel safe. Exactly. And again, it's given one particular group preferential treatment because where is the ad campaign saying that people need to stay in the elevator if somebody smells? Where is the ad campaign saying that someone needs to stay in the elevator if a guy walks in with a hoodie on? Where is the ad campaign for that? No ad campaign for hoodies, no ad campaign for someone who smells. It's all about the male who wants to identify as a woman. The Victorian government can't afford hospitals, but they evidently have plenty of spare cash for misogyny. The irony, of course, is that women aren't demanding the right to single sex elevators. (laughs) I dare the government to commission an advertisement scolding women for not wanting to share change room with a man. Of course, they won't show you that, but they're suggesting if you're not up for it, You're a bigot. And that's what it really comes down to. How dare you demand your own spaces? How dare you demand that your locker rooms be female only? How dare you demand that men don't come into your bathrooms? That's the real issue they're targeting. How dare you demand that males don't compete in women's sports? And where is the ad urging men to get up for pregnant women? (laughs) Where is that ad? I've never seen such an ad before. In fact, I remember back in the day, pregnant woman gets on the train or the bus. It's like, you know, people get out automatically. But now they don't bother. (laughs) They don't bother. So where is the ad telling people to get up for pregnant women? Of course, the seat is all yours. There's nothing to worry about. You're safe. 
The fact that they use the term safety, they're shoving that word down our throats. In my opinion, the word safety is a code word for feelings. It's feelings that they care about. They don't want you to hurt their feelings. If you hurt their feelings, they are going to feel unsafe. So even if that means when a woman is in a situation where she does genuinely feel unsafe or is actually unsafe, she's supposed to ignore that to appease a man's feelings. It's so nice, but it's telling that the bloke on the tram leaves five women standing <laughs> while clearing space for the gender diverse male to sit down. <laughs> Chivalry isn't dead, ladies. It's just been repurposed. Everyone now knows that a gentleman offers his seat to other guys in frilly shirts. It's the kind thing to do. But again, literally no one is debating whether transgendered people should be in elevators or on trams. Everyone knows the argument is over women's change rooms. But the government is too clever to address that one head on. So they pretend some perverse equivalence between the tram and the toilet to imply that men belong everywhere. I'm not sure men belong in women's toilets. Well, I suppose you don't think they belong on trams either. So in that scene, a trans woman drops a box and a bloke gives... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? Um, this is ridiculous. How cheesy is this commercial? Are you serious? This commercial is so patronising. It really is. <laughs> wow. I mean, why are they spending money and time into these sort of campaigns? Like he said there, it doesn't sound like things are great in Victoria at the moment. I used to live in Australia, South Australia, in 2013, around that time. And I didn't know that the female prime minister basically took away my rights at the time. I had no idea. Carl, I can't remember the last time a bunch of women protested at any trans or pride event, but it happens the other way all the time now. Yes, that's right, Peter. It seems that um, actual women, women like you, me and Moira, have less rights than trans women. And Peter, it's really important to keep reminding everyone out there watching at home how this happened. This happened because of Julia Gillard's government when they amended the Sex Discrimination Act in 2013 and deleted the meaning of the word woman. They repealed the meaning of the word woman. They took it out of the act. So that's who we have to blame. You know, Julia Gillard, who everyone holds up as a the feminist icon, she is responsible and her government is responsible for leaving women in the situation that we currently are. I mean, I didn't really follow the politics too much <laughs> when I was there. I was just enjoying living in Australia. <laughs> but yeah, she made it so that anyone who identifies as a woman also got those rights. <laughs> so absolutely ridiculous. You know, that was all the way in 2013. I can imagine what things are like now. It's uh, a hand. It begs the question, by the way, how did the bloke know the box dropper was a trans woman? Did he assume gender by judging on appearances? It's such an obviously right response to help someone, anyone who drops something that you wonder why they included that scene. Well, it's the false equivalence trick all over again. They're softening you up for the next scene where a trans woman of not small stature wants to run out with the girls' football team. You're not cool with that? Oh, and I suppose you wouldn't help someone with a box either, bigot. I love the way they've made the trans woman a person of colour. If you draw the line at men playing women's sports, you're not only transphobic, you're racist. See how they do that? They really do hate you. But seriously, did you see the size of that person? That's a biological man who has no business being on a footy field with women. Also, why is she wearing a nose ring to play football? Literally no one does that. We're showing the team celebrating inclusion before kickoff. Curiously, we're not shown any tackles or the ambulance arriving 15 minutes later after four women from the opposing team suffer multiple fractures. The Victorian government that don't want you to vape because it might give you a cough are encouraging women to risk injury on the football field to protect the feelings of men. Absolutely. And the fact is, 
Women don't come out and say this openly for the most part, but the real reaction is fear. We have a situation in Canada at the moment where they're allowing men to play in women's rugby. And a lot of the women behind the scenes are saying that they're scared. They're petrified about having to compete against this dude. The same thing with the jujitsu. The women were petrified about having to compete against men. Some of them weren't even warned (laughs) that they were going to be competing against men. And they found out in the middle of the competition and realized that this person had some sort of super strength only to find out that it was a man. So the real reaction is not, hi, yay, come and play with us. For many women, it is absolute fear. Can you imagine if you're in the opposing team and you're realizing that their team has a man who identifies as a woman though, so that's okay, right? Knowing that you're gonna be tackled, you could potentially be tackled by a person of that size is not something to smile about. Most women instinctively, would be scared. And that's not bigotry. That's reality. The feelings of the men who want to identify as women comes first, even before safety. Female players told Redux they feared for their safety, but that rugby officials were more concerned about a discrimination lawsuit. Wow. So Kelly J. Keene, upon seeing this commercial, she said, wow, they really want women injured. What else are you supposed to think? As long as a trans-identified male has his gender affirmed and feelings appeased, we're willing to risk your safety. Your safety is collateral damage. If you get injured, oh well. We'll just say, oh, it could have happened when you were competing against a woman as well. It happens all the time in women's sports too. We'll just gaslight you and dismiss what's happened to you. No amount of taxpayer-funded Victoria Labour propaganda will change the injustice women feel when they have to compete against men in single-sex sports. Men do not belong in women's sports. Female athletes have the right to a fair playing field. That's what it is. What happened to having a fair playing field when it comes to sports, when it comes to competitions? We're doing away with that now. It's complete insanity. Come out on the field with us so you can mangle us while we smile about how inclusive we are. Get effed. David said, I noticed they don't show any tackles exactly. And that's what the journalist said there. They don't show any tackles. It's gaslighting women. Women are to smile and get on with it, to make men feel welcome and validate their delusions that they are women. And Sal, again, I always mention, she's currently in a fight (laughs) to force the Australian courts to define a woman, to once and for all define what a woman is. She asked, why are men unsafe when a woman leaves an elevator? Victoria government. The irony of this commercial, the woman is leaving because she feels unsafe in an isolated space with a man. She does nothing wrong. She doesn't hurl insults. She doesn't say a thing. She just leaves. They're telling us we're not allowed to care for our own safety anymore. Are you actually feeling unsafe? That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter! Because she reminds him he's still a man despite the dress. Wow. And that's what it comes down to. This is all about affirming somebody's gender identity and ignoring the feelings of everybody else. So if there isn't a clearer message about where we stand as women, at least according to the uh, Victorian government there, I don't know what is. That says it all, basically. The males who identify as women, they come first in the eyes of the government. When it comes to our legislation, when it comes to our concerns, raising and voicing our concerns, they want you to keep quiet. They want you to stay in situations where you feel unsafe. They want you to welcome the male athlete, even if you feel scared about having to go up against this person. And if you get injured, so be it. But let's just remember everything that women are requesting, these are basic requirements that we have always had and they have no right deciding that we don't deserve those things anymore simply because we're women. That is discrimination. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. 
Take care of yourselves and God willing, I will see you in the next video.